everybody, it's Amy from Making Space. Um, today I've got another creative um, at-home activity that you can all have a go at. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to make these lovely little woven coasters or bowls. Um, they're really simple to do. Um, adults, children, anyone can really have a go. Um, if you leave them as they are, they make really nice little bowls because they naturally curve up like so. Um, great for keep, keeping trinkets in or loose change. Um, if you wanted to make them into a coaster you just have to sort of flatten them out and then I would recommend attaching them to like a backing bit of fabric or a bit of cardboard just to stop it from curling up. I have left mine loose because I wanted to be able to show you the back of the design as well. So I'm going to talk you through the materials that you need to get started and then I'll go through the whole process with you. So, put this one to one side. So again, this activity is um, really simple to do and you should be able to do it with materials that you've got lying at home and if you do need to buy any, then I'll pop some links online as well. You're gonna need some um, odds and ends of wool. Um, this is really great for those kind of bits that aren't really long enough to do anything else with. Um, if you've started a project, you've done some knitting or some crochet and you've got those loose ends, this is a really good project for kind of using up those loose ends. So whatever you can get your hand on. Um, ideally, the kind of the thicker, the better. So you need some wool. Um, you also need some paper plates, um, like these ones here. You need a pen, a pair of scissors and a needle um, with quite a big eye. You're gonna use it to sew with the wool. So the bigger the eye, the better. And that's it, that's all you need. So I'll clear this to the side for now and then we'll get started. <clears throat> so most people I would have thought might have a few of these lurking in the back of the cupboard from a, a barbecue or an old party. Um, again, if you've not got them, you can make your own. Um, you could just cut out a circle from a bit of cardboard, um, the back of a sort of cereal box, anything like that will do. And this is going to become our loom. Um, we're going to be doing a weaving process. So the loom is what you use to kind of work on. And we're going to mark out this plate because what we're going to do is we're going to cut some little um, sort of cut marks around the edge, which we're going to use. So um, grab a colour pen and you're going to mark it out. Now, um, something that I found from doing my trial is that it's good to have an odd number going round. Um, so when you're weaving, it's always up, down, up, down, up, down. I had an even number and I found it was, with two of them, I had to kind of jump over and do two at the same time. So if you can, get an odd number. So one, three, I'm just going to space these ones out a little bit. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So let's do eighteen. Um, you can see um, from what I've just done, I'm not being too precise. Um, if you wanted to, you could grab a ruler and really mark it out. But for the um, purposes of a demonstration, I'm not going to worry about it. So once you've got your lines marked out, you're then going to grab some scissors. Just get one there. Yeah, you're going to then grab some scissors and just make some cut marks. So one, two, three, four, five. There we go. So I've just made some little cuts about an inch long and mine are about an inch, inch and a half wide. I've got 19 cuts around the edge of mine. Um, the more you've got, the kind of tighter the weave will be. Um, if you're doing it with the kids, feel free to start with a sort of lower number and the more you do, then you can kind of build up. And now we're ready to start weaving. So you're gonna grab some thread. We'll start with this nice blue. 
and what you need to do first is you need to put your um, thread on which we're then going to weave around so let's try and find an end Now, if your thin is a bit string, like a bit thin, sorry, like this one, I might double this one up just to make sure it doesn't snap on me. Um, I want to make sure it's nice and strong because this is going to hold your whole weaving together. So I'm just going to get some thread. Cut that off. And then I'm just going to loop this round. And like I said, if you're working with a thicker wool or string, something this sort of size, you probably don't need to worry about it, but... For this one, I'm going to double them up. So I'm just going to tie a little knot in the end to start off with. Just so I don't get confused. Okay. So now we need to start weaving. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to pop it through one of these cuts you've made. And leave a little bit on the back. Okay, because what we'll do is we'll come back to that later. You're then going to go roughly across, like so. And like I said, if you've got an odd number, it's not going to be 100% precise, but it doesn't really matter. Flip the plate over, come to the next cut, tuck it in, then come back round, and then cross over. Really simple. And then you're just going to repeat that all the way around. So really make sure these um, bits of wool are really tight, as far down in those grooves as you can get them. It just stops it from slipping later on. And this is a bit that's probably the fiddliest um, and sort of starting the weave. So if you're a young person wanting to have a go, maybe ask an adult for help at this stage. Um, but once you get going um, or you've done a couple, you'll be able to carry on by yourself. Move all that out of the way. Just keep repeating the process until we've got all the way around. Now I'm probably not going to have enough wool here, so if this happens to you, don't panic. What we'll do is we'll knock this off and then we'll start again with another one. Oh, no, that goes there. There we go. Because this isn't quite long enough, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to knock this on the back to that original bit, that bit where I started from. So tight, really nice and tight. Like so, probably do a double knot just to make sure. You can just cut that bit off. And then we just need a little bit more. How many more we've got? Literally a cup of water guy. Okay, so again, just loop that round and tie that off. Now, what you'll notice here is because we've got an odd number, we've got two on this side and one on this side. So what we need to do is just be quite clever about how we get the, the threads over. So you can go round the back to there and then come all the way around the back to there and into the middle and what we can use is we can use this thread just to tie off that middle section get it really into the middle of the plate as well so I'm going to come back in poke it up underneath and I'm just going to kind of go round and under a few times try and make sure it stays in the middle of the plate roughly and then once you're kind of happy with where it is, you just need to tie it off. So tuck it under a few of the threads. There we go. Until you've got two ends, you've got a loop on one side and a bit on the other. And then just use that to tie a knot. Like so. 
Don't worry too much if it's not 100% neat. You can see mine's not particularly even or that neat. Um, you're not really going to see these threads once you get going, so don't worry if they're not perfect. Um, also, any knots, don't worry about them. Um, the side that you can see is going to be the back of your weaving. So tie a knot, cut that off nice and short. I'm just going to flip it over and I'm just going to tuck that one. That's my loose end just round there and tie that in a knot as well just to keep everything nice and tight loop that around a few times and tuck it back over okay we are now ready to start weaving so this our loom is gonna um be the basis for our weaving and now you can choose um some string so i'm gonna work with a thicker string just because it will fill up the middle a bit quicker. Cut off a nice long length. Um, like I said, it's great to use up your loose ends. So if you've just got short ends, don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to add another color. So use your thick eye needle. And I find it's a bit easy. If you just wet the end of the wool between your lips, it should thread on a little bit easier. Um, like I said, you don't want a normal sewing needle, you want one of these kind of thick tapestry ones. So pull the wool through till you've got a good kind of long end on it. And you're going to start by just tying this end off, just so it doesn't come undone. So tuck it under one of the threads, tie a little knot. I'm doing double knots on everything so I don't want them to come undone. And then just slide that knot to the middle um, of your weaving and then cut off the excess. Right, and now you're ready to start going. So the way weaving works is you go under and over, under and over these threads, um, and as you go round, it will be the opposite each time you add a new ring, um, which means you get this lovely woven effect as it builds up. So let's get started. Um, if you've not got a needle, you can just put some tape on the end, but they does make it a little bit easier. So if you can get hold of one, um, they are good. So we're going to go under, over, under, over, under. And you can see you can get through about four or five bits of string at a time. And then you're going to pull it tight. Okay, twist it around a little bit and then you're going to carry on. If you get a bit lost, just really look so you can see on that last one I went under it. So that means I'm going to go over this one. So over, under. And what you can do is you can do how I'm doing it where I'm, I'm pushing the needle through further out where I can see what I'm doing and then just pulling it tight afterwards. So again, we went under that one. So over. Now this first bit is the more fiddly bit because it's so close you can't really see what you're doing but as you get sort of further out and your rings get bigger it suddenly gets easier. Okay so I'm now coming back to the very beginning again so you can see because I've got an odd number I'm automatically going to go over that one which last time I went under. If you do yours and you find that you have got an even number, don't panic. I did this one and all I did is I just grouped two together and classed that as one. So like I said, I did it on here and you can't even tell the difference. So if it does happen, it really doesn't matter. Don't panic. Okay, where did we get to? Is it over? Now this is a great activity. Um to kind of keep coming back to you don't have to do it all in one sitting you can just have a little go do a section and when you get a bit bored or you want to break set it to one side and come back to it you don't need to do it all in one go that's a little bit Like I said, it's a bit hard to see at the moment what's going on but i promise you the more i come out the easier it'll be to see And 
And also, if you go wrong and you're suddenly like, oh, hold on, I've, I've gone around the same way, it's really easy to unweave it. You just go back the same way you came and just undo it to where you can see you've made the mistake. It's a really easy um, process to do um, and to sort of see where you've gone wrong. And you can see each time, just sort of pulling it closer, if I bring this up to the camera, you can start seeing now that you can really see the weaving. You can see it's going over, under, over, under with each different ring that I'm adding. So I'm just going to speed up a little bit now and add a few more layers so I can show you how to add a new colour. Each time, just keep pulling it tight. That's really important. That's what gives it this really nice sort of structure in the middle. Uh, what is it on that one? Now, obviously, these are great to go up to coasters or kind of small bowl sizes, um, but you could make a much bigger loom and use more threads and um, make kind of place settings as well on much bigger bowls. And this is a really nice sort of mindful activity. Um, it, you know, it's, I think craft is great for that in general, um, but this is a lovely activity just to kind of keep coming back to, keep adding more layers. Um, it's a really satisfying process as well. What's great about working on a plate is because the plate naturally curves up, you're weaving um, sitting slightly off the bottom of the plate. So it actually makes it really easy to do, which is great. Um, when you find this end's getting a little bit closer, just kind of pull it so you've got a much longer length to carry on working with. And just keep doing that until you are ready to kind of um, add your next colour. And the great thing about these tapestry needles is they're not sharp really at all. Um, so they are great for sort of younger children as well. But you can get plastic ones which are completely blunt as well. So, um, you know, use what you think's best um, for who's doing the activity. You're going to know if they can sort of be trusted with the needle or if you need to supervise. It's completely up to you. So you can really see now the more that I go around, the more I'm building up the layers. keep turning it around as we go and you can see what I mean when I said it got easier the further you came out it was particularly tricky in the middle but the further you come out it gets much easier much simpler to do so you might want to start them off if you're doing it for a young child and then once they've got going then they can kind of carry on from this sort of point And again, getting close to the end, so I'm just going to hold that, put it so I've just got a little bit left so I can carry on. I'm just going to tighten up that a second. Ooh, just pulled it off the end of the needle there. So I'll just wet it again, 
re-thread it and carry on a bit more. Okay, and we're nearing the bit of the end of this bit of wool, so I can then show you how to add another colour on. And you can see how quickly it starts coming together. It's not a long activity. Um, you know, really simple to do. Um, but great for all ages as well, you know. I'm I'm really impressed with my little um bowl that I made and you know it's to me it doesn't look particularly childlike, so um great for adults and kids alike. Okay, so a few more to go before we're at the end of this bit of wool. Let's get twisting it round. Okay, a couple more, and then I think we're nearly there. Okay, so once you get really near to the end of that bit of wool and you want to swap your colour, pull the needle off the end, so you've just got a little tail here, and then choose your next colour. Let's use some of this maroon. Oops, not a duck. Okay, so what you're going to do is get one end of the wool, put it together with this end, so you've got the two bits together that you want to join, and tie them in a knot. Poking it through, so you can see I'm tying both the bits of colour together, and then pull tight. You're going to pull that really, really tight. And now you can see you've basically added this colour onto that colour, meaning you can carry on and that carry on with the weaving. I'm now going to just cut those two tails off and we're going to carry on. So really easy to do, not difficult at all. So re-thread your needle with a new colour and then just carry on. And um, so where were we? Over, under, over, under, over, under. So what you just want to make sure is this little knot stays on this side of the weaving and you'll be able to trap that up with the next few rounds so don't worry if it wants to turn down you can kind of pull it back up to this side. As I said earlier this is almost the back of your weaving so any knots and stuff you want on this side and that means when you flip it over they won't show up from the right side. Okay, so you can see I've done one loop the whole way around there. I'm just coming to where this knot is. So I'm just going to push it down, pull that up so the knot's on this side, and then carry on. So that's over. So that's under. There we go. And again, it goes back in, poke it back under, and then pull it tight. And by the time you've got a few more layers of the weaving out, that knot's going to be perfectly trapped on this side of the weaving. And just keep going around. Now if you're doing this with a really young child you might want to encourage them to do one sort of stitch at a time and um, they might find that easier um, but for those that are a little bit older you can do like how I'm doing where you're doing a few at a time. And just keep checking in every now and again to make sure you've not accidentally picked up two or gone over two stitches just keep turning it around so you can see now we've done a few rows by that knot it's kind of stuck on this side and you do um, want to make sure you're just each time you are pulling it tight you're not sort of leaving big gaps between the layers um, that means there won't be sort of big gaps um, in and around your weaving so 
So like I said, it's a great activity for using up old um, scraps of wool that you've got sort of lying around. And you could even use um, scraps of material. Um, if you say got old clothes that you've kind of outgrown or have got some holes in, if you cut them into strips, you're almost making your own material to weave with. So you can use them um, to, to make weavings with. So rather than the wool, you're using scraps of fabric. Um, it's sort of a bit of a play on rag rugging. Um, and it's a really great, great way of kind of using up old textiles as well to sort of save them going to waste. But for this example, I'm doing wool, um, sort of more traditional and just what I had to hand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more colour for you and then I'm going to show you how to knot it off. I know it's not as big as this one, but I think by now you've got the kind of how-to process. So I'm going to make sure I show you how to get it off the plate as well. And obviously you can make yours a lot bigger than mine as well. See, again, we're nearing the end of that bit of wool, so we're just going to leave a little bit. Keep going till that's pretty much used up. Couple more. Perfect. Pull the needle off. And let's add one more colour. A bit, oh, it's a bit knotty. Let's use this little bit of pink here that they've got. There we go. So again, we're going to take the two ends that we've got, hold them together, knot them round the end of your finger, round the back, and then poke them through that hole. Make sure you've got both ends, and then pull tight. That gives you your knot. Cut off the ends, get rid of those, and then you can then re thread your needle again. Wet it a little bit to make it a little bit easier to thread, poke through, and you're ready to carry on. So, you can see it's super easy to do, and um, it's completely up to you. Obviously, the longer the bit of wool, um, the bigger this section will be, and the further you come out, um, you're going to need more wool. So, if you wanted even. Um, sort of segments of colour you're going to want to make sure you've got more wool each time because obviously the circles are getting bigger each time you go round and if you didn't want to use these as a coaster or um, a little bowl they just make lovely pieces of art um, you know you could hang them on a wall um, you could make a little wall hanging from them sort of if you stitched a few together you can make them into brooches, which would be really cute, and um, sort of sew little brooch backs on them. The kind of possibilities are endless, really. Um, completely up to you. And obviously, if you have bigger plates as well, you can make much bigger designs as well. Um, I've seen some online as well where. Um, They've not cut them off the plates. Um, some children have decorated the plates in the background with sort of coloured patterns and then done their weaving and left them on it. So it almost becomes a kind of a piece of art in itself. Um, not taking it off. I'll just check where I'm going. And you can really see, you know, this isn't taking me long, how quick it is to get something that looks really quite cool. Do. use up this thread and then I'm going to show you how to knot it off and this bit again can be a little bit fiddly um, so if you're a young person having a go at this this is when you might want to grab an adult um, but I'm going to show you the easiest way I found to kind of do it so we don't want to waste any of this wool so I'm going to make sure I use up all the bits that I can
few more on there. And again, keep pulling it tight, especially as you get further out on your weave. You really want to make sure it's really tight. Um, if, if it's kind of loose and baggy like this, it's, it's not going to look very neat. So really try and keep it nice and tight. So we've got a couple more. And you just want to make sure you've left yourself a little bit of a tail there. Because what I'm going to do, I like to knot this end up. Um, I find it just saves it from kind of going anywhere. So I'm just going to make a loop. Catching the thread like so. You can see that. And then go back through that hole. And pull it tight. Okay. And if in doubt, do it again. <laughs> like I said, I like to do double knots on mine just to make sure they're not going to go anywhere. Um, don't pull too tight. What you don't want to do is pull it so tight that it kind of um, sort of scoops this lot in and kind of ruins your nice sort of circular design. But once you're happy that that's on there, cut that bit off. We can trim this bit down later. And obviously, if you were making a coaster, you'd probably do a few more rings on that to make it much more sort of this sort of size. Um, but for now, I'm going to show you how to take it off. So what you're going to do, flip your plate over and cut through. Oh, I know. Probably easier with a bit of a smaller pair of scissors. Um, cut through the back. So you've just snipped off one bit and then pull those threads down. Now you can see you've got two loose ends. And what we need to make sure is we need to make sure these are secure because if they're not secure, this can just come undone. So what you're going to do is just tie them in a knot. Now, again, like I did here, you don't want to pull too tight. If you pull too tight, it's going to sort of change the shape. We're not going to have a nice circular shape. So just tie it to the edge of the weaving. And again, I like to do a double or even a triple knot. Like so. And then cut these bits off now. Um, you can cut them right up to the knot or you can leave a little bit of a tassel on the edge. It's completely up to you. Um, I do recommend cutting these off as you go. Otherwise, by the time you get most of the way around, you've got bits everywhere and it gets a bit confusing. And again, just repeat the process. So flip it over. Cut the bits of string. So we've got two loose ends. Tie them together. And you can see I'm just controlling where the knot is. I'm not letting it really sort of mess up my nice circular design. Pull it out. And cut off, either up to the knot. And I'm just going to, for ease, just cut these here because I've not gone right to the edge. That's enough of the length. You want to make sure you leave enough of the string to tie them up. You don't want to go right to the edge because you'll then struggle taking off and being able to knot it up. This is a really important stage. Um, so you don't want to sort of miss this bit, mess this bit up. Sorry. Okay. See what I meant when I said it gets a little bit fiddly at this stage. Just keep taking your time. Going round. And you can cut it all the way off, but I do prefer doing one, cutting it, tying it off, moving on to the next. I find it just helps keep it together a little bit better. And this is when you'll notice the edges will start... Um, sort of curling up a little bit and making this sort of bowl shape. It's just where the, the threads are wider on the outside than they are in the middle. They're naturally going to curve it up. And even on this tiny little one, we've still got a bit of a bowl shape, which is really cute. Again, I think these would make lovely little brooches. Um, you know, you could do different sizes and layer them up, stitch them together, maybe with a button in the middle. Could be really, really cute. 
stitch them onto a hairband, um, onto a little corsage. The possibilities are endless. Okay, we're nearly there. Now you'll notice again, because we've got an odd number, we've got an odd number left here. So I'm just going to show you how to knot them up. It is easier doing it this way and having an odd number when you come to the weaving and just figuring out the sort of tying up and the, the getting the bits on there because it makes it much quicker as you go around. So let's cut off the last three. And you can see that was our pink and our little tail there. So I'm just going to cut that off as well. I'm just going to readjust my phone a second. Bear with me. Ooh. So I'm having to make do with my... Uh, phone holder it's not the most professional <laughs> so because I've got two threads I'm going to um, separate these out and just tie that one with that one and that one with that one if you didn't double up the wall just tie it once and then before you cut it off use that same string to kind of tie with the other edge as well um, and then And these last ones. And last knot. And then trim with that excess. And again, then you might want to go through and just trim these all down, or you might decide you want to completely cut them off. It's completely up to you. I'd always recommend using a colour that you that still works with your design because you can always see them. And obviously that's the back because that's the one with our knots on, which makes that the front of our design. And then you can see. Let's clear the decks a little bit. And obviously, like I said, this is much smaller than you'd normally use for a toaster, but it was just for a demo. And again, you can sort of see if you started laying these up, you can get some really nice effects with kind of corsages as well and um, so there we go really simple fun weaving technique for you to try at home um, if you do have a go make sure you send us some pictures we'd love to see what you make um, you might have a go at sort of variations of what we've done as well so yeah do show us what you're coming up with and um, we'd love to see and um, if you have a go I hope you have fun okay thanks then guys bye